Hey, how are you doing? Scott here from scottsbasslessons.com and today I want to talk about mapping out the fingerboard, you know, and learning the notes on the fingerboard. It's one of the, I think, the trickiest things that as bass players and guitar players as well we come across is learning the notes on the fingerboard and having some sort of system to map out this, you know, the Rubik's Cube of notes. You know, it's quite tricky. In one way, the guitar and the bass really easy because it's really geometrically um, organized as in you know if I play a C major scale down here it's the same as a C major scale here and here it's the same pattern right and the same chords you know we can just move the same shapes around which is great the unfortunate thing is that we have repeated notes that make things complicated. For instance, this C we have here, and this C we have the same C here and here. Like we've got three of the same C's, okay? Whereas on a piano you've got one C, you know, one middle C. There's only one where on a guitar and bass you've got multiple, um, multiple choices of the same notes, so it does get a little complex. But there's... A couple of things that I think will really help you not only learn the notes of the fingerboard, but also just, I really want to talk in this lesson about mapping your fingerboard out as well. Now, one thing I think is really important is learning chord tones and arpeggios. For me, it's, um, is it the Pareto's principle? Is it Pareto who came up with the 80-20 rule, you know? 20% um, of what you do equals 80% of the results. I'm not going to talk about it too much. Um, but anyway, really interesting if you want to search it on YouTube. Um, I'll search it on Google, actually, not YouTube. Um, but I think that chord tones are exactly that. You know, like really, really practicing your chord tones and your arpeggios um, will equal 80% of the results for you. You know, um, it really is worth digging in with the, these chord tones and arpeggios. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, and learning them across the entire neck in multiple um, octaves and inversions and the full thing. You know, it's, it's not really exciting stuff, but it's just such a foundational part of what we do is that if you do it and you do it well and you do it consistently, it will literally transform your bass playing. It will do that. You know, I'm not, I am, you know, the proof in the pudding. It's what I did and it's really what took my bass playing to that next level is just studying chord tones, arpeggios, and learning how to use them to create bass lines, grooves, and solos, okay? So if you haven't looked into chord tones and arpeggios, do that, it's really important. And we will talk a little bit about that today. But I also wanna talk about, and the, the key thing is, is that you can get a little bit lost when you're learning arpeggios, as in, okay, so C major arpeggio. <laughs> Okay. okay, so it's all over the fingerboard. Well, how do, how do I use that? And it's, it's just, it's almost like too much information. So what I really recommend you doing, and I stole this directly from Gary Willis, who I was lucky enough to study with um, back in my early 20s um, in Barcelona, um, is, is, is essentially come up with, um, I call it what he calls it, the four plus two concept. Okay, so it's giving yourselves positions on the fretboard to work within, okay? So instead of just thinking, oh, I can just choose the entire fingerboard, you're really narrowing it down and saying you can only work within that one particular area. So a great area that we all know really well is this area down here, this lower five frets. And what the four plus two concept is, is you find the key center which you're playing in. So for instance, let's take um, a four chord groove, um, C major, A minor, 
D minor, G7, okay? Write that down, okay? So C major, A minor, D minor, G7. Now, if you're an Academy member, you'll have your, the tab and notation for this lesson and all the notes below this video if you're on Scott's, if you're on Scott's Bass Lessons. If you're just watching on this on YouTube and you're not an Academy member, just shoot on over to Scott's Bass Lessons and check it out because you can try out the full Academy um, for 14 days for nothing, uh, just to see if you like it. So, where was I? So yeah, so it's the four plus two concept. So what we do is we have four frets and then a fret either side. That's the position that we have to work in. So it actually gives us six frets, okay? Now, if you've written that chord sequence down, that chord sequence is in the key of C major. All the chords are from the key of C major. Okay, so first of all, we've got to find our key center. So, in this position, where's the C major scale? There's a the C major scale, okay? So that's the key center for this position, okay? And when we're playing our bass lines, grooves, in this position, this first position, we can move a fret either side. If we move up into this position, which is likely, you know, we could do that. Well, then we're not in this position anymore, this four plus two, we're in a new four plus two. Here's the C major scale. In that position, and we can move either side. If we moved up here into this position, here's the C major scale. And we've got a four plus two, one fret either side. Does that make sense? So how we use this to learn the fingerboard is, first of all, we start with roots. And I just want you to play the roots of the chord sequence I just told you, C major, A minor, D minor, G7, just in this position, okay? We'll do a chord per bar, okay? So two, three, four. So what I'm doing is there, just by using that sequence, I'm making sure I know where all the notes are within that area, the four plus two. Now, in this sequence, I actually didn't have to use any of the frets out of that position, okay? I just used the, 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 uh, the four frets. So that was C, A here, or A here, there's two A's. There's only one D, and then there's the G. Okay, G for the G7. Oh, and there's a G here. Okay, so C, A, D, G, and then C. So when you're playing that groove, make sure you say the names, vocalize the names of the notes when you're playing it. So C to A, D to G, C. D to G. Now, if we move up a position, so we play the C major in this position. Okay, well then we need to do the exact same process. So again, I'll just show, this is a, a, a it's not that common but it should be, <laughs> okay? So play the C major starting on the little finger, okay? So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, okay? I don't want you to do this, okay? Because this is our fourth 
our four frets, five, six, seven, eight, we can go down one or up one, okay? That's our four plus two position, okay? Now don't worry if you can't do, you know, reach these big stretches like that. I don't, you'll have heard a finger perforate, right? And it, and it comes from guitar, which is a smaller instrument. So people try and get that guitar technique and use it on bass which is fine when you're around here, but when you're down here, it can be a real stretch. So, especially for instance, like here, on that position I just showed you, that can be a real stretch, but there's nothing wrong with, I play the A, the G, A, and I'm playing this B here with my little finger. I don't have to keep this finger on the G, you know? And then when I move to the C, I don't have to keep this on the B, you know? See the shift in there? There's no daylight between the notes either, it's really fast. So I don't want you like, you know, <laughs> crazy bass faces everywhere, okay? So now do the same exercise. Just play the bass line, say the notes of the chords as they go by, the root notes, um, in that position, only using that scale shape, okay? So C, A, D, G, C, A, D, G, C, A, D, G. Okay, again, it's just getting used to where the notes are within that position. Then, let's move up again to here. Now, this is super easy because it's the same shape. So, theoretically speaking, the notes will be in the same place, but because you don't normally play in this area, it will feel a lot harder. But you can actually, if you really get into learning these shapes properly, you can just take that information that you've learned down here directly to here. So we've got C, A, D, G. Okay, so A to D. G to C A to D to G and again I'm not even coming out of that four um, onto the the plus ones on either side of that that position yet okay now so once you've done that up the fretboard okay um, then it's time to add in the chord tones, okay? So then we look at the C major becomes a C major arpeggio. Or just... And then the A minor. The D minor. And then the G7. Now, where this the 4 plus 2 comes in is if you really think about it, Say, for instance, we go from the, the D minor, okay? The D minor has an F in it. Well, that F, that minor third, exists down here as well. So we can use it. It's in that, that you know, the four plus one. It's down here, it's down here. So we can play something like this. They found me. Here we go. Here's the D minor. And again, I use it on the G7 as well. The G7 is there. It's got an F in it, flat seven. That F exists down there. Now, we could put passing notes in as well. On the C. Okay. 
I'm stepping out of the that four the the four frets. I'm stretching out over here and then sliding back in again. It's just that four plus two one either side. So and then to the A. Now, check out what I did there. I came up here. Now, as soon as I go up here, I've gone out of that four plus two. What happens internally in here for me? Well, it means I've gone completely into a different position. I'm playing here, so now I'm in this position. Which is the fourth finger position for the major scale. If you, um, if you haven't checked out my lessons on scales where we talk about the, the different positions, go to Scott's Bass Lessons, check them out. There's tons of them on there for free. Um, it'll keep you busy for a long time. <laughs> so that's the fourth finger position. So as soon as I, I'm like, okay, I'm over there. Now I'm in this position. Now again, I stepped out of that position, the four plus two. When you step out of it, you automatically go into another one. So the key here is being able to, you know, see which one you've just stepped into. When you move out of a four plus one, four plus two, so four plus two, one, so four frets, one either side. When you step out of that, that shape, the, uh, that position, you automatically need to know which position you are using. There can't be any like, ah, <laughs> I'm lost. You know, don't worry. You know, we all get lost and we're all, you know, we do. But what I'm saying is that is, the, that's where we're aiming for. We're aiming for as soon as we, okay. As soon as I move there, I'm now in this position. Anyway, so my point is that this is a really, really efficient way of mapping out your positions on the fingerboard instead of just having a free for all. And it really helps you do two things. One, learn the notes, especially if you just work at it in the positions and you say the note names. And the other thing it does is just, it, it kind of organizes the chaos in a way, you know, like it's, it's great to learn the arpeggios up and down the neck. You should do that, but you need to have a system that kind of ties you down at the same time. Because if you don't, there's almost too much information and you'll just get lost in the sea. So what, it'll really, really help you if you just, you know, condense the amount of information that you're working with when you're creating bass lines and grooves. And it just helps you learn the fretboard so much more. Now, what I would say is, instead of trying to do what I've done today and just whiz up the fretboard, I'd work on maybe one position for a month. You know, maybe two weeks, maybe a month. It depends on how much time you're putting in. But I'd work on, you know, just this first position for, say, for up to a month. Then this second position up to a month. You know, you have to work out how much time you want to put in, obviously. But you don't want to move on to an, the next position until you've fully nailed the position that you're working on. Um, what I would say as well is um, work on different chord sequences as well, not just the one that I've given you. Um, work on, you know, you could do full tunes, you could do jazz standards, you can do whatever you want, you can do pop tunes, you know, but make sure you're trying to slot them into these four plus two hand positions. It works for, you know, 99% of stuff, you know, there's certain stuff, obviously when the key changes, your hand changes as well, but if, as long as it's in that, that key, in one key, then you're, you know, you're good to go with the four plus two hand position. So hopefully you've learned something in this lesson. If you have, go over to scottspacelessons.com. We've got a ton of stuff there. And remember to check out the academy. You can try it out for 14 days, totally free. Take it easy and I'll see you next time in the show.
2015 Kickstarter challenge. Hey everybody. Hey, hey guys. Hi everybody. Hello all. Hello 